Good. Well, he's not done yet. No. <laughs> so, uh, we're recording. I don't think I gotta set him up, but here's the continuation. Blake. Hey okay, guys. Just come Okay. So where we left off, we had just created our first panel page for the advanced screen. Okay. So we just created our first panel page. Uh, we found out that it gives us a URL to visit. Right, we defined the URL as um, as home, so let's go check that out. Okay, there it is. You see our titles welcome, like we talked about earlier. And it gives us a bunch of tabs, so that's kind of cool. It helps us administer the panel page when we browse it to it, just like any other node page or any other taxonomy page. So let's go to the advanced. Here we can provide menu items if we want to. Um, we're not going to do any of that. We're going to have to worry about it. But if, if you want to, you can. You can also define CSS code that gets loaded just when this panel page gets loaded. So if you don't want to go into your template file or your theme files and add CSS code, uh, you can actually just paste your CSS code right in here. And it'll load only when this panel page loads. Okay. And another cool feature that I really like about panels is that it gives uh, user authentication or uh, like access control. So you can define. You know, I only want anonymous users to see it, or only authenticated users, or any other roles that you have to find on your site. You can limit access to this panel page based on their role um, within the website. So we're going to skip over. Oh, the so don't cool. forget the, the really cool thing. You can disable the blocks. And okay. Okay. So you can disable blocks in Drupal regions, um, which is is cool. And let's save and, and see what happens when we go to our home page now. Welcome. Let's see. Let's view it. So now there's no side block, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, so you can disable blocks if you only want your panels to lay out that particular page. Pretty cool feature. And we'll turn that back on. We want to use it because our taxonomy context block is going to show up on the right-hand side, right? So okay, save that. And if we go into content, we can actually bring content into our panels. Okay, so. This is a kind of a, a cool ajax interface to adding content. And little buttons here to pop up and select which content you want to add. Uh, if, you, if you use panels in the past, they've, they've kind of reorganized this now, so it's, there's a lot less icons. It's more lists of, uh, it's easier to use, I think. Um, right now, you can see that we have custom, which would be custom content, which we could just go ahead and enter content that we wanted to show up, like this is an about us page section or something. Like just generic content that you wanted to type and put on that particular page at that particular place. Um, contributed modules. Now you'll see our photos and our view videos, views, have actually been pulled into the panels module. So panels recognizes all the blocks that are on your website and allows you to place these blocks inside the panels layout. Okay. Uh, in addition, there's core blocks which are provided by the core modules. Uh, who's online, who's new, user login, etc. So the one reason, one thing we installed earlier was the panels views or panels, yeah, views panes module, and that's going to provide us with more options in terms of adding a view into our panel layout. So we're going to use that instead of using our basic views. Does that make sense, for everybody? So views gives us blocks that we can add anywhere on the page, right? So we can choose the photos, right, and we can add this, and then. Views would supply all the content into that block right there. Okay. Uh, however, we're going to take a little bit of an extra step to do this, but it's going to give us the flexibility to define the arguments that we wanted from earlier. So it's a little bit more work, but there's a lot, a lot more reward. So let's save this. We're going to go to the pan, panels, uh, the views panes module, and then we'll come back to this after. I didn't install it. Okay, so add new panels. Um, views panes. Okay, so remember before we went to panels pages and we created a panel page. Now we're going to go to the views panes area, and you're going to see that we have a couple of views available for us. And let's do the photo one first. Okay, so let's create a panel view. Okay, there's a lot of options here, and I'm just going to point out the ones that were really pertinent. And, you know. Most, most important here. So the panel view name, 
we can name that however we want, but that's the name that we're going to see in that pop-up box that we saw earlier, uh, right here. So the view, the this name here, panels view name, is what's going to show up right in here when we choose which view we want to add to our panel. Okay. And there's a lot of terminology and stuff. So if I go too quick, you know, and you get confused about wording, just let me know so I'll go over that again. Okay. So the, pan the panel view title is the title that shows up above that block of content when you actually view the page. Okay. Um, and the category is what's used to categorize uh, those blocks in this screen here. So it'll add another category called views underneath the menus one or underneath another one. Okay, is that clear? Okay. So let's see. And you can specify the view type. If you define a page view, you can use page or block or embedded. Uh, either way, we're going to use the block type. And here's where it gets interesting. It noticed that we have an argument specified for the view that we want to create, and it's the taxonomy term ID. We are going to specify no argument because it's on the home page, right? And the home page we wanted to give it no argument, and the required context doesn't matter for this because we're not giving it an, an argument. Okay. Okay. So let's save this. Reload this page, and on our home page, you can see that we'll add from the views the photos, and we'll add that pane. Another cool thing is that you can override the title if you wanted to for this particular panel page. You could call it um, home page photos, and that would actually override the view. So let's go ahead and create a quick photo.
and you, know, right. you can you can put the API key in three pool and it'll handle everything for you. You just need to apply to the special string key. You need to get a Flickr account and then apply for it. Right. Okay, so back to our homepage and panel page. Okay, sorry if I went really quick through the screens here. This is our homepage. Uh, this is the panels pages administration screen where it shows you all the pages that we've created using the panels module. Okay, let's edit the homepage and we'll hit contact and we will put the view, the, the video's views on the left hand side and we'll add that pane and click save and we can view this by going to slash home. Right. Okay. So you notice a couple things. You notice a little dot here, it's a list item. Remember the view outputs the list items in an unordered list for the people that know HTML. Uh, so that's just a list item button and it, it's helpful. Uh, and views too, actually you can have it output in unformatted so it only gives you actually the content. It doesn't format it in list items. So you don't have to use CSS to override the, the little button if you don't want it there. But it's, it's good for five at least. You can, you can override that button using CSS so it doesn't show up. Uh, the homepage photos, remember we renamed the title of that panel pane in that administration screen to say homepage photos. Had we not done that, it would just say photos, which is the, the title that we specified before that. Um, now, the thumbnail size extends to the size of the columns. Uh, yes, it, it, it actually set that in the content type. Before in the content type, when we created that new field, let's go, to, let's go there. Video, manage fields, configure. We could actually set the video display settings, the video preview settings, and set it to 200. And let's we'll save field. Okay, if this doesn't do it, then we can. Now we're editing the video's view, okay? And this is where we, we specified earlier what view, what content we wanted to display. In the field, we could tell it what video size we wanted. I think we did this for the photos. I, I don't think I went through that for the video, sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and use the preview video size. And we're going to hit save. And we're going to go back to our home page. And there, resize it. Okay. So that's a good question, good example. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the homepage photos off because we keep getting this flicker error. So content, remove that, save it. Okay, so for the sake of the rest of this demonstration, we're going to just be using videos. That's cool. Um, so we're just going to be doing videos, but you can see how we can use videos and mimic that for other content types if we wanted to, just so we can get through the feed API stuff. Uh, let's see. Oh wait, sorry, that's there we go. So that's good. Okay. So now we need to make this homepage our new homepage, right? And, and Drupal, we need to tell Drupal that instead of going to that just you know the regular node page that lists all the published nodes uh, that are published the front page, we're going to set this new panel page so that everyone's directed here when they want to go to our homepage. Okay. So to do that, we're going to go to admin slash settings, and you're going to see a lot of. Uh, options. And our site information, and at the bottom we can tell it we want it to go to slash home. Does everybody follow that? And we'll save configuration. Can you call it whatever you want or do you have to call it home? Do that? We can call it whatever we want. Oh. Right. I wouldn't use uh, other conflict names like node and like the name, like node home. I, I, I would, I'd say we're out of the way from that, but yeah. That was done work? Settings. And there's a lot of other settings that you can fill around with. Okay, so now let's go to our homepage, and you'll see there's that panel page. It's, it's now our homepage. Okay. Cool. So now let's start getting the taxonomy terms in there, because after that we can start doing the feed API stuff. So I'll go really quick here. Okay, so here's our taxonomy administration screen. So we can add a new vocabulary. And this is important because 
we're using a single vocabulary to categorize all of the tour dates. So all the tour dates fall under a particular vocabulary. And if you're not familiar with taxonomy, vocabulary, category, all those terms, there's a couple handbook pages that I can, I can reference later that will help you get over that uh, and sort of learn that system. But it's, it's all nomenclature. So add vocabulary, tour dates, and it's basically just a way that we can categorize all the categories below it. It's, it's kind of cool, you can specify which content types can be categorized under this vocabulary. And for this one we want photos and videos. And we're going to use a single hierarchy because there's no tour dates that have tour dates within those tour dates. If that makes sense. And we'll do submit. And we did two. I'll delete one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the submit button twice. Categories is part of Drupal core, correct? Right. The tax. This is all part of the taxonomy module. Uh, it ships with Drupal core. It, it's, a, it's a robust interface for categorizing content within your site. And let's go ahead and create a couple tour dates. So add term. Uh, Los Angeles. Okay, so we just created new tour dates that we're going to associate all of our content with. Uh, this might help. We're going to go into the uh, blocks settings, and we're going to enable the, the taxonomy context blocks. Block. Uh, remember earlier we, we enabled the taxonomy context module that allows you to basically, it gives you a block that you can uh, display taxonomy terms for. So you'll see it says context for, and then the vocabulary name that we created. I've been going kind of quick, so I want to get to other stuff. Is there any questions? Anybody ask? It's a little bit too quick. Or... So we're going to enable this for the right sidebar and save the blocks. So there you go. Now you see we have Los Angeles, San Diego, San Francisco. The cool thing about taxonomy context is that if you have a hierarchical uh, categorization system, so if we had done different states with locations within the state below it, it'll actually expand and collapse for you. So if you browse California, it would show the sub-items, Los Angeles, San Diego, San Francisco, and uh, you can navigate to there. So it's, it's a really good module if you're using taxonomy at any large scale uh, on your website. So let's take a look at what we get now when we go to the Los Angeles page. We'll see that our path is taxonomy slash term slash term ID. Now this relates to earlier when we created our view, our argument was for a term ID, correct? And the argument was a numeric number, which is the term ID that we have here, the number one. You'll see that San Francisco is the number two, and that San Diego is the number three. So Drupal internally has numbers for each of these taxonomy terms to keep track of what's what. And so we're using the argument that we specified in the views module earlier. Uh, So here's our argument. We chose taxonomy term ID. That means the number that the taxonomy was given from Drupal. Okay. And another way we could have done it, we could have done taxonomy uh, taxonomy term name, which would have required us to actually type out San Diego or San Francisco or whatever for that specific argument. So for yeah. So if you ever get confused in the views module, that's the difference between those two. Okay. Is, uh, is it possible to use Taxonomy term itself and still have animals give you the context. Mm -hmm. that into I don't think so. I think you have to use the term ID. That's, that's yeah, I don't think it actually builds the name and then inserts the name. What was the question? So Mike kind of jumped ahead. Uh, Mike asked if we use the taxonomy term name for our argument, would panels still allow us to use that context later on? So it's kind of like jumping ahead, but I don't think it actually does. I think you have to use the taxonomy term ID because it comes straight from the URL and gets passed in. But yeah, I don't know. Um, so let's go ahead and create our new panel override page. So we're going to go to our panels module, our panel pages. And when I discussed earlier about panels being able to override taxonomy term pages or node pages, this is where we're going to start doing things like that. So right now we created a home page. 
Now what we want to do is we want to override the Los Angeles or the San Diego or the San Francisco pages so that we can use panels to lay out the content when you go to those taxonomy term pages. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? I guess let's, 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 uh, let's see what it looks like before we use panels pages and then we can compare it to what, what it looks like afterwards. Let's grab another YouTube video. Now you can see that we created a taxonomy vocabulary, and we can choose how we want to classify it. Right? So this is this is going to be in Los Angeles. Let's save it. Let's go back to our home page. I want to I want to categorize the other one as well. That's one. Thing about not having titles show up that's kind of annoying is that you can't click to go to the node, it just, it just plays a video. <laughs> uh, so hit edit, and we're going to select San Diego, and we'll hit submit. So here we have two videos that are categorized in two different taxonomy terms, and you'll see that when we go to Los Angeles, we get one video, and we go to San Diego, we get another video. Okay? Really simple, very basic stuff. So we want this page to be laid out differently, right? We want to have different content there. We want to have more power, more flexibility to lay out the page. So that's where taxonomy is going to come in. Or like where, go ahead. Uh, does the taxonomy context module show the number of nodes that have been tagged or given the term Los Angeles or something? I believe you can enable that. I don't quote me on that, but I think you can. I know you can do some of the cool stuff with like, the description can show up right here, uh, uh, right below, and that's what we used on the Darnam site. We, we made it so that there's a description above the taxonomy term page. I want to get onto the feed API stuff. So, okay, so here we go. Let's create a new panel page. Now, here's our home page. We're going to add another one. We're going to do a three column layout. It's already done for us. Panel name is going to be called taxonomy override. Oh wait, this has to be lowercase uh, underscore. <coughs> taxonomy override. Okay, and that's just to name it so that Drupal knows what name it is. And our page title is going to be uh, tour date. And then we're going to give it a path. The path is really important here. So the path that we're going to give it is the same as the taxonomy term page. So if you click on here and you look at the path that it gives you, it's taxonomy slash term slash term ID. Okay. Here we're going to specify taxonomy slash term slash percent. Okay, and that's how it uses an argument. That percent tells panels that this could be any number or any other you know string essentially. Okay, so we're going to effectively override the page that gets loaded whenever taxonomy slash term slash argument is inserted there. Does that make sense to everybody? Questions? No. <laughs> right. Okay, so here you can see. Uh, actually, there's nothing really there for the advanced form, doesn't matter. This is where context comes into play. In, in context, is how, how does the URL that's, that's accessed in this panel page, how can we use data from that URL to show different data on the page or different content on the page? Okay, so um, the context it is taking, it's going to take some information from the URL up above in our URL menu box, right? And it's going to capture that and tell Drupal that we have that data available to us so we can use it to maybe filter out our views or we can use it to display other information. So it's an it's a easy way to override all of these taxonomy term pages at the same time, automatically, and tell Drupal which page we're trying to view. Okay, so the taxonomy, okay, so the context of the number that's being shown at the top, the taxonomy slash term slash one, two, three, four, five, whatever that is, that relates to the taxonomy term, right? And so when we build our context, it's going to be a taxonomy term context, so that it knows that ID is a taxonomy term, okay? 
So add that argument. So the default, we saw these options earlier a little bit, maybe. Ignore it. Content that requires this context will not be available. Or display page not found. So if the argument is missing or is not valid, select how this should behave. Okay. So we're going to just ignore it. And any content that is looking for a context is just it's going to deal with it on its own. Okay. We, we already said yeah, we already set that setting in the views module for us. Okay. So the argument type. Okay, here you go. So this answers Mike's question. You could have specified term ID or the term name before. Okay, so the panels module will recognize if it's, you know, you can tell it, okay, this number is a name or an ID number. Okay, and it'll pass that back into the views module as either the ID number or the name of the taxonomy term. Okay, so we're going to use term ID because that's what we chose in the views module before. Okay, and you can limit it to different vocabularies. Um, but we're going to do it for all of them right now, because we only have one vocabulary. So let's save that information. And let's go into our contents. And here's our three columns. Let's add the videos to the middle. And we'll add the pane. So we have we're halfway there, okay, and so we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to go back and, and, and edit the view a little bit, but you can see that now that that views pane is showing up every time we go to the taxonomy term pages, and the taxonomy term pages have the layout that we gave it, right? So automatically we're overriding all the ways that it looks, okay. So let's go back to our panels and our view panes, right? Let's click on edit. And remember earlier when we said that there's no argument for that view? We just basically told it to ignore it. it ignore the context that we just set, right? We're just showing all the, all the terms. So now the argument source becomes from the context, okay? So this kind of links everything together. So we have the panels page where we set the URL, and then we tell panels, okay, this URL has some sort of information that we need to tell the blocks that are going to be displayed on it, right? And we built a context for that. Now, in the views panes module, we have views, and we're telling views that this panels page has information for you, and this is where it's coming from, okay? So we're using the context. And the context, the required context, will be a taxonomy term. Okay, is that kind of, it all kind of links together. Now, if you wanted to, you could take con you could take arguments from other places, like the URL path itself, or uh, you can even make an input on the pane configuration, so that when you add, uh, I, I'll get to that later, sorry, I don't want to confuse anybody. So from context, taxonomy term. So we're telling the view that we have an argument that comes from a panel's context, and it is a taxonomy term. Okay, and let's hit save. And let's go to Los Angeles. Can we take a look at the views pane? So, um, yes. Okay. So here's the videos. 
And what did you want to get specifically? Um, I want to see if we have to specify like if it's from from the URL or. Oh, sorry. Panel argument. So you should be the first panel argument because that's the that's first, the first percentage sign that we defined earlier. Um, Required context. We, let's do any context and just see if this works. Did you associate one video with uh, San Diego? Or right. Or? Right. So what, what it should be doing is it recognizes when we go to the San Diego page that we have the San Diego taxonomy ID in the URL, and then it sends it into views to tell views, hey, we have the taxonomy ID for San Diego. Only show me the content for San Diego. Right. So that's not explaining anything. So let's go ahead and check the view. So as easy as all of this is, it's very complex at the same time because there's a lot of data getting passed around between everything. So you saw how San, San Diego or San Francisco doesn't have any content. Okay, that, that, that would have content. Okay. So San Diego didn't have content, so we passed in the term ID for that taxonomy term. It, it didn't show us anything because there's no content for that. Um, let's see what I have. I have the development site set up on my local machine as well, so we can just step through this actually. Um, so let's go to our panels. Let's go to our panels views. Okay, and these are the ones that are actually used on the website. So for videos, let's edit. Let's see. So we had the argument source from context. The taxonomy term was the context. And the panel argument was the first argument for the panel, just like we did in the one. Uh, it's kind of cool, too. You could also uh, have other settings. If you read through all the description text, it'll become pretty clear. But we'll ignore those for now. If there's not, uh, that's better text. because. Right. right. So going to our panel page, uh, for the entire site, we just created two overrides, one for the home page and one for the taxonomy term. So the entire website runs on two panels, basically. If we go to the context, we'll see that we have a taxonomy term context. And it's a term ID. We ignored it. And we chose the vocabulary tour dates. Now let's check our views to make sure our views match. Created a block view. We have the field, the embedded media field video. And the argument type was a taxonomy term. I'll display all values selected. Filters were exactly the same. 
sort of criteria. There's something different between these two because these are basically everything is the same. So. Path is got the percent of the matter. Yeah, that percentage sign is how we tell if there's an argument. Or how, there, yeah, how there's an argument there. Let's see. Our context should match. So PDAPI uh, mapper and PDAPI aggregator. Okay. So PDAPI and PDAPI node. Okay, so the PDAPI module is right here. These are the three that we're going to enable. PDAPI module provides most functionality. PDAPI node module allows you to create nodes which pull in feeds. Okay. And the mapper module is right here where we're going to use it to map the CCK terms. So click on save. And you'll notice now that we have feed as a content type. Okay, so we can create a new feed. And this will be our Flickr feed. And our feed. Uh, it gives you additional information in the node add field now, so it's feed, it's a little drop down. And you have to specify a URL, so let's go Flickr, or we need to, let's see YouTube, sorry. Hmm. Um, So there we go. Uh, we're going to refresh let's see, update existing feed items. This, when you check it, will, when it downloads the feed, if there's existing items, it will update it with the new content. Uh, the automatic feed update, you can pause it so that when your cron job runs, it doesn't automatically update the feed. So by default, like how RM is using it is there's a cron job that runs every five minutes. So every five minutes, those feeds are updated and checks to see if there's new items on there. And you can pause that for certain nodes if you want only certain nodes to be doing the only certain feeds to be updated automatically. Okay. And you can tell it to delete older items when those updates are done too. So if there's items that are older than a year, they can be deleted. The benefit to this is that each feed item is, is created as a node on your website. So if you have a, a ton of content, your, your database is going to get really big unless you delete them out. Okay. Let's just leave it off. Okay, so let's, let's hit submit. Okay, so to install the feed API module, also you need the simple pi parser. 
could have used a common parser too, right? Could yeah, you could use a common instead of simplify and it'll work. Okay. Just go back to the free API module setting. Free API settings. Or no, just go back to the module. Modules and disable. Yeah, the modules and then disable simplify and enable the common parser. Okay. The benefits using simplify is I believe it's a lot faster. Yeah. Is that correct? So it, in, in order to install this, you just need to download a simple file and then install it in your center site uh, folder. And get to the back here. Now you have to go back and enable the common parser. Right there, common syndication parser. Right. Thank you. Okay, so let's. Does that common syndication? Yeah, they just need to simplify as an optional or better parser. Okay, okay, so there you go. So uh, now we can hit edit. Actually, we want to refresh feed on creation. Submit. Yeah, this simplifies a little bit faster. Uh, it's, it's based off of an XML library or an XML parsing library that it, it parses XML really fast. But you, it's, it's under a different license, so they can't distribute it uh, through the Drupal model system. So you have to actually download this, this PHP script and, and just copy it onto your folder. That's it. it. It has a full walkthrough on how to do that. Okay, I think I'm running out of time, guys. I can try and do some more later, I guess. But it's 9:30, and they I want to get this out of here. So, sorry I didn't get further. I tried to do a full walkthrough, but hopefully, this is helpful in terms of using panels or using steps. Thank you. Does anybody have any final questions?